This is the news and talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Yeah. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right, right now. now. Two oh four the time. Welcome, the court of public opinion. Your voice, your opinion, your attitude on the issues of the day. Man, I could not wait to turn this mic light on. Couldn't wait. Um, Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, George Soros, Maxine Waters, um, and now I'm told uh, the CNN headquarters all receiving suspicious packages, um, these devices sent to the Obamas, the Clintons, uh, the CNN, and and a few others. Um, oh, ex-Attorney uh, General uh, Holder as well. Uh, I've seen a couple of pictures of these things. I'm no ordinance expert, so, you know, I, I really couldn't tell you. But I'm going to open up the phone lines, um, and I'm going to take your particular position on this. Uh, 1-800. Now, now I know, I know I'm cynical and I get that. And that's why I'm doing this. Um, I seem, uh, it seems extremely odd to me that they would all receive it at the same time. You know, I, I could be wrong. I, I'm not sure. But before I do anything, I want to go to Westwood One, Steve Kastenbaum, uh, live from New York. He is, uh, on the ground there. I believe uh, in close proximity to the CNN headquarters. Uh, Steve, thanks for being with us. Uh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. All right. Can you uh, give us a feel for what's going on? Is the building still evacuated? Now, this is where CNN's uh, headquarters is, right? Well, it's the, the New York Bureau. It's where uh, the president of CNN, Jeff Zucker, uh, has his offices. And most of the primetime shows are our broadcast out of here. Uh, I used to work at the CNN. I was here for seven years, and it has uh, become increasingly the the center, the nerve center of CNN over the years, uh, taking that away from, from Atlanta as they move more and more shows up to New York. Uh, and the majority of, of the uh, broadcasts do happen now uh, in New York and Washington, D.C., although uh, CNN International and, and HLN are, are still uh, centered in, in Georgia. Gotcha, gotcha. What have you been able, because uh, the information, especially when it's so spread out and it's coming in from different sources all over the country, what have you been able to learn? What did, uh, first of all, I guess, uh, are they evacuated there at the CNN headquarters? It seems that they've let people back in. They gave an all clear uh, signal a while ago, uh, and uh, some people were allowed back into the building. Uh, but uh, the NYPD is still, you know, uh, scouring different areas. Uh, and they've also gone to other media outlets here in New York uh, to uh, examine uh, those locations and have a presence there as well, just just to be uh, you know, have an abundance of caution uh, to to do that. Uh, and uh, this is a really crazy story the way that it unfolded because uh, the anchors who were on the air at the time, Poppy Harlow and uh, Jim Shuto, were talking about the packages that the Secret Service intercepted uh, as they were being sent to Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton's home in Chappaqua in Westchester County, which is about 40 miles north of New York City, and the Obama's residence in Washington, D.C., uh, naturally, the Secret Service uh, still screens their mail. You know, sure. they have Secret Service protection, and, sure. and they screen their mail. So they caught these um, devices before they got anywhere close to uh, Barack Obama or or Hillary Clinton. Uh, but in New York, what had happened was uh, we learned from the police commissioner here that when when this happened, they have um, a, a program in place uh, where they go to these large mail rooms in these big office buildings and. Uh, tell the mailroom, they educate the mailroom staff at times like this what to be on the lookout for. Uh, they go to likely targets. Uh, you, you have to remember that uh, post 9 11, several media institutions were sent letters uh, containing anthrax, and there were right. several people killed right. Right. Uh, after 9 11, a, a mystery that still hasn't been solved to this day after uh, people opened up these envelopes containing this, you know, harmful biological material. Uh, so ever since then, the NYPD and the Joint Terrorism Task Force have been proactive in, in educating mailroom employees at these 
high profile targets about this sort of thing. So they just happened to send um, some NYPD uh, employees to the Time Warner Center's mailroom uh, when this package was discovered while they were there. Uh, and immediately while Jim Shudo and Poppy Harlow were on the air, uh, the uh, building's alarm system went off, signaling a, a, a need to immediately evacuate. Now, I've, I've been there for seven years, and, and we routinely several times a year had these uh, drills where they would um, conduct these uh, evacuations like this. And it was not just for a fire. It was also for the potential for the, for the building to come under some sort of an attack. So for it to happen for real, I, I, I know my colleagues, my, my friends were – uh, really shaken to the core when that alarm went off and, and they realized what was going on and that this was the real deal and it wasn't a, a drill this time. Any statement from um, from CNN as far as what's occurred, um, what their strategy is at this point? Because now we're getting information that I guess um, a suspicious package has been found at the office of uh, Representative uh, Wasserman Schultz uh, in Florida. Sure. Uh, I mean, it doesn't, from a news gathering perspective, it seems a bit odd that everybody would receive a package and uh, God forbid anyone's harmed uh, in any way. Um, but has CNN come out and said anything formally to, to you, the press that's assembled there in New York? Well, they, they released a statement and email to their employees that they that they sent that they made available to uh, reporters as well, uh, explaining what happened. Uh, it, it, uh, you know, the the package at CNN was actually addressed to former CIA director uh, right. Brennan, right. who is a pretty loud loud critic of President Trump. Uh, and uh, and and in that letter, they said that you know they're taking every precaution possible. And and in that email. And that if anyone feels like they do not want to be in, in the bureau today for their own safety, for because they don't feel safe, by all means, do not come back into work. We understand that sort of thing is what they, oh, what they put you. out. But the but but the information that uh, about the incident itself, I'm sure you saw the news conference with the FBI and the right. police commissioner and, and the mayor and the governor. That's where all the uh, the information about the device itself was was released. Well, listen, we appreciate uh, very much. I know you're on top of it there on the ground. Steve Kastenbaum with Westwood One, live um, there on the scene in New York, CNN headquarters. I've got to step aside very quickly and uh, do your first afternoon drive check, and we'll try to get you around the hot spot safe and sound. And I, okay, I'm just going to come out with it. I'll tell you exactly what I think is going on next. Okay, we're going to have to compile a list, David. Um, go ahead and give me a list, if you will, David, uh, of everybody that supposedly has received a suspicious, a suspicious package. The list is getting too long. And when I come back, I'll tell you exactly what I think. Listen, on a much lighter note, Allied Sighting and Windows, you've heard me talk about them for years. Why? Because I believe they're the best you can do when it comes to your siding or replacement windows. And if I told you this was a family company, a Leonard Courtright family company, you might understand. If you say Leonard Courtright, then you know quality is word one. Uh, Energy-wise windows by Simonton, backed by a double lifetime warranty. And it, maybe you're thinking about changing the look of your home. No, well, you're in luck. Dozens of color and design combinations, but something else I really wanted to tell you about this. Uh, if you're concerned about your energy bills, and who isn't, the Energy Wise Radiant Shield, that's what it's called, developed by NASA, for NASA, uh, from Allied Siding and Windows. It's guaranteed, guaranteed to reduce the average home's electric bill by 25%. Now, what this is, is a radiant barrier for your attic. It's like getting, get this, seven feet of insulation. You need to ask them about it. Hey, my guarantee to you is no hard sell. They don't work that way. They never have. They don't have to. And you tell them I sent you, get a $500 Amazon certificate with your whole home replacement siding purchase. It takes about 30 seconds to set up a 30-minute estimate. They'll come out, look around, maybe take some measurements, give you some options, then they're going to leave you alone to make up your own mind. The same name and phone number for over 30 years. More than 40,000 of your customer. Well, here's the bottom line. 
You got neighbors? Of course you do. 40,000 of them know how well this works. Give them a call. You ready? 972-888-9988. I'll give it to you again. 972-888-9988. And if you want, you can text ALLIED, A-L-L-I-E-D. Text to 25827. ALLIED, Siding and Windows. Call. It is a troubling time, isn't it? Yes, it is. And it's a time of deep divisions. Yes, yes. And we have to do everything we can to bring our country together. Together. We also have to elect candidates who will (laughs) try to do the same. That's right. All right, talking about the bombs, time to come together. And by the way, here's a political ad. It's time to elect candidates. Man, I wouldn't give you... uh, I trust that woman about as far as I could throw this entire office complex over my shoulder. Um, All right, let me give you a list. Let me give you a list of who got a package today. George Soros, President Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton... Representative, um, uh, rep, she, uh, she's not a representative, uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, CNN president, Barack Obama. Um, uh, yeah, the um, Camilla Harris package was addressed to John Brennan at CNN, I guess. Okay, now if I were going to, if I said to you, give me a list of all high-ranking Democrats that are just a monumental pain in your backside, what would you come up with? Yeah, there you go. George Soros, uh, Bill and Hillary Clinton, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, uh, CNN, and uh, oh, you forgot Eric Holder, and you forgot Maxine Waters. Maxine Waters and Eric Holder, they got something, too. Maybe it's my cynical side from being behind a microphone for 26 years, or maybe it's because maybe it's because I wasn't born at night, or at least last night. This is a political stunt. This, that's what exactly what this is, a political stunt. Isn't it coincidental that everybody that got a bomb, by the way, none of the bombs went off, so this guy must be really lousy, whoever makes makes these bombs. Uh, first of all, I don't condone violence of any kind. Bombs, handguns, bow and arrows, or anything else. But uh, don't you think it's strange? Out of how many packages? Let, let me count them here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Out of six different bomb packages, nothing went off. They weren't intended to. They were intended uh, to give the lamestream media working hand in glove with the Democrats something to yammer on about other than the mob coming from Central America, which is working in favor of the Republicans, not against them. It was, it was, it was all pre-produced, choreographed, if you will. All oh, these poor Democrats, people are trying to kill them. Really? Really? Call me cynical, if you will. I don't condone anybody sending anybody a bomb. Republican, Democrat, Democrat, man, woman, short, tall, fat, thin. I mean, we're better than that. This was a political stunt from the jump. That's what this was, in my mind. In my mind. That's my opinion. I'm entitled to it. I'm not a journalist. I'm not a newsman. I'm not Walter Cronkite. I'm a talk show host. All right? And that's exactly after 26 years in this business, sitting behind this microphone, watching this play out day after day after day after day. It's just too coincidental. And after watching Kavanaugh get a pathetic political public lynching based on nothing other than someone's accusation, I would not put this past the Democrats in a New York minute. Wouldn't do it. All right, that's just me. I'm sure I'll hear about that later. Uh, let's go to your calls. Let's go to Tony in Fort Worth. Tony, thanks for waiting. How you doing? Well, uh, hold on, Tony. I got to. I'm so. I'm so ginned up. I've got myself so worked up, Tony. I forgot to press the button. Now you're on. How you doing, Tony? Uh, sir, 
you are 150%, 200% correct. This is the biggest political stunt west of the west of Europe, of the Atlantic Ocean. This is the biggest farce from the Corrosive News Network. That's what I call them, CNN. It's a joke. It's a farce. I mean, come on, two weeks before a midterm. Same thing with Kavanaugh. Ten days before Kavanaugh goes before a vote, a woman comes out of the woodwork for sexual harassment. Two years ago, at this time, two years ago, almost to the day, the tape comes out with Trump and his goosing of women, and now these 16 women come out. You know, you don't even hear about these 16 women anymore. Remember from two years ago, the 16 women that came forth and oh, he harassed them? That's, yeah, I forget about that. Yeah, you're and, right. And, and here's another example. June of, I think it was May or June of 17, uh, MSNBC leaked Donald Trump's tax, a tax return from some tax year, and they found out that Donald Trump paid more taxes that year, more in taxes that year than Bernie Sanders, the Clintons, and top-ranking executives in the United States. He paid like $23 million in taxes. And now what do we hear about Trump's taxes? Nothing, because he pays his taxes. He doesn't have to show his taxes. The only reason that was came out was in 1976 because of the uh, Spiro Agnew. Then, then they volunteer. If you remember in the 76 election, Ford and uh, Carter volunteered their tax returns because they didn't want any more Spiro Agnew stuff when he cheated his taxes or took bribes and kickbacks as governor of Maryland. But, but anyway, so he doesn't have to show his taxes. And let me tell you something, America. I could care less about Donald Trump's taxes. I want to know what's he going to do for my taxes and you, the radio host, taxes. This is a big farcical. It's the biggest farce. Uh, it, it's so sad. They're so desperate for votes. There's a red tsunami coming. And I want to have a quick note. I travel for a living. I was in Fargo, North Dakota, and the Minnesota area. That, that Al Franken seat, that's going to go Republican. And I put that girl up in uh, North Dakota. She's a Democrat. She's going to lose. There's a red wave coming, people. And that's really all I have to say. This is the biggest joke that I ever saw west of the Atlantic Ocean. Thank Tony, you. I, I appreciate the call. I, I do appreciate the call. I know some people in Fargo. Um, I spent a, a lifetime one year in Dickinson, of all places, North Dakota. I was running an oil job. Uh, but I, I got to tell you. Who thought that this was a good idea? And, you know, maybe sending it to, I don't know, one or two Democrats, that might give you pause. Who? what's going on? Could be uh, could be the other side of the coin from that crazed Democrat that tried to shoot up the Republicans playing baseball. Uh, maybe it's uh, in retaliation for Democrats losing their ever-loving minds chasing people out of restaurants and, and harassing them. But maybe that's what... But no. As usual, the Democrats couldn't even fake something right. Bill and Hillary and Barack Obama and George Soros and Eric Holder and Maxine Waters, let's not forget Debbie Wasserman Schultz. What, who else do you want to throw in there? Huh? If you're a high-ranking Democratic official right now, you got to feel kind of bad. Hey, somebody left me out of the loop. What about me? What about me? I need to garner some support as well. We have to unify. We have to come together and send one very clear, strong, unmistakable message that acts or threats of political violence of any kind have no place in the United States of America. Okay, let me get this straight. I heard Rush do this ad nauseum, and I know why. You know, based on what I just said, even though it's my opinion, I'm sure the legal department is camped out down at the end of the hall. Um, that, this is my opinion. This is too co too coincidental. Uh, what, 13 days until the midterms? You got 7,000 people in a mob, and Homeland Security has said, mixed in with all the other folks, they believe there are some Middle Easterners and some MS-13 folks and all the rest. Uh, what was going to work, I think, for the Democrats, at least in their mind, well, what'll be cool, we'll get 7,000 people at the borders, we'll get uh, Gail King from NBC or wherever she's from, and everybody else to go interview all the, uh, the poor moms with the crying kids. Oh, this will be great. Nobody will vote for Republicans in the midterms, except that didn't happen. And they failed to realize why uh, the lion's share of the votes for Trump came, hey, we want to keep the country sovereign, secure. Um, yeah, you're welcome. Just abide by the law. So that didn't work. 
So we got to have some of the diversion. Quick, what do we do? What do we do? Uh, hey, how about this? How about all these high-ranking Democrats get suspicious packages? And there, oh, we lucked out. By the grace of God, we missed it. Um, we all got bombs. Y'all got bombs on the same day. What is it, your birthday? All, everybody's got the same birthday? Come on. I mean, how stupid do you think the American people are? George Soros, President Clinton, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, Barack Obama, um, Camilla Harris, Eric Holder, Maxine Waters, all on the same day. And, and amazingly, I mean, thank God, from my mouth to his ear, thank God none of these went off. Doesn't that seem strange, too? Not that I wanted it to. I didn't. But it just, I don't think the... Uh, I don't think the American people are buying this. And I think it's going to probably ramp up and get worse before the midterms. Forgive me if I'm not just curled up in a fetal position in the corner of the room. Oh, my God, we got a serial bomber. I don't think so. Hey, let me share something with you, all right? I've worked in Washington. I've done, uh, I've done the midnight meetings in the abandoned warehouse with the deep throat folks. Been there, done it, seen it. And guess what? Republicans and Democrats both have those contacts to reach out to. You think they're going to do this themselves? No. They have contacts. Hey, hey, listen, uh, you didn't hear it from me, but contact that guy that you know that knows a guy that knows a guy. Uh, you wait. They'll, they'll get some crazed individual. Oh, no, I, I'm not political at all. I don't even vote. Uh, all right. I, I, I've ranted long enough without getting thrown off the air. Uh, Randall in Rockwall. Randall, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Randall? Oh, I've got a real question that uh, makes you just kind of go, hmm. hmm uh, yeah. Where did those pictures of these bomb devices come from? Um, I've got a question. What responsible police agency says, oh, we think we got a bomb here. Let's, uh, let's take let's a color CNN picture of it and this. slap it yeah, on CNN. Yeah. Let's take a picture of this, guys, and uh, that way you can uh, mess up our crime scene and get in our perimeter. And Oh, yeah, and be sure to take those uh, photos with that electronic device that uh, might not trigger, <laughs> but, you know, but... Uh, <laughs> It's I'm sorry. I'm sorry to be laughing at something so serious, but how many times, uh, and I hope it never happens again to anyone, Republican or Democrat, uh, or anyone, how many times when a suspected bomb uh, has been um, has been found, do they have pictures of it within an hour on national television? How does uh, I don't remember the last time. Well, and then also, why do bombs only get sent to people that don't open their own mail? I mean, really, the last guy that really thought this through was Ted Kaczynski, and he sent bombs in the mail to people that he knew would open their own packages. Uh, Hillary Clinton's not going to open her own box. Neither is Barack Obama. Neither is anybody at CNN. They go to a mail room at worst. You know, you're going to get a guy that's making minimum wage, and you're going to blow his hand off. Yeah, he's but, the, he's the loser, right? So why did uh, all of these guys get? You know, I'm really disappointed. I didn't get one, but then I didn't win the lottery last night either. So well, I, I, I kind of thought you you weren't a billion dollar winner since you called me. Um, but, yeah, you know it. it I, I'm sorry. I know I'm going to be chastised greatly for this. I know somebody in the paper is going to say, um, you know, how, how, uh, where's your compassion? This could have been anyone. I don't think so. I, I think it was all a political stunt to divert oh, yeah. from the, the mob coming up from Central America, to divert from the midterms happening in 13 days. I, I, I think it's a political stunt. Now, if I'm wrong, I'll be the first to admit it. I just don't think I am. The investigation of this will probably not come out until after November 6th. Of course. Of course. Well, it's an ongoing investigation. Boy, if there's anything Democrats love to do, uh, it's not work on our behalf. It's not making the country stronger, better. It's not working for the people that live within the borders. It's investigating. Investigating anything. So and yet, 
You're right. Still, we don't we don't know what these packages are, but sure, bring your bring the photographers in here and let them take a picture of. Yeah. We got to get that out. Yeah, we're not sure what's going on, or if there are more packages out there, or if other bombs are floating around looking for uh, their intended uh, destination. But in the meantime, let's take close up color pictures of the bomb and slap it on national television. That's a good idea. Uh, I appreciate the call very, very much. Let's go to Bryce and Plano. Bryce, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Bryce? I'm doing fine. How are you? I'm well. Very good. Uh, I'm just upset that they didn't send a bomb to Beto O'Rourke. Now, be nice. You can't say that. <laughs> Nobody wants a bomb be, to be sent to anyone. Well, I'm just, uh, I'm just upset that they left him off the list. Well, I'm, I'm sure... <laughs> I'm sure, if I were to ask you, uh, pure and simple, Bryce, where do you think these devices came from? What do you think set in motion all of these uh, special deliveries uh, on, uh, what is today? I've, I've forgotten. It's Wednesday, uh, the 24th. Uh, why do you think this happened? Well, it's October. This is an October surprise. Ah, well, there we go. It's an October surprise. <laughs> Straight from the Democratic National Committee. Oh, man. Man, isn't there a law against uh, even fake terrorist threats? Uh, isn't there a law against something like this? Well, that's not the point. The point is to cause trouble for the Republicans, and all it's going to do is make people wonder, why didn't they send one to Beto O'Rourke? Hey, now, now one see, badly. Bryce, there you go again. You're, you you got to quit that. you got to stop that. You know, some uh, black suburban's going to pull up in your driveway, and then I'm never going to hear from you again. Today we went out to offices of elected officials, uh, media outlets, uh, television, and in fact, when the package was discovered here in the CNN mailroom, uh, we had NYPD personnel present who were showing them uh, what these look like and what to be on the lookout for. It, this, is, this is crazy. Uh, of course, the headlines are reading on all the so-called news gathering agencies. Bombs were sent to CNN, the Clintons, the Obamas, the ex-attorney general Eric Holder, Wasserman Schultz, Maxine Waters. <laughs> uh, none of them went off. And uh, if you want to know what they look like, just turn on television, um, because uh, for some reason, not that I've ever seen them do this before, um, but they've decided to show the bombs all over television. What do you think this is, really? Forgive me, maybe I'm just the cynical guy in the room. I think it's a giant political stunt 13 days before the midterms from a political party that has tried everything under the sun to ditch this president, and they can't. Uh, Ron in Dallas. Ron, thanks for waiting. Hi. Hey, it's good to talk to you. I hadn't talked to you in a while. How's it going? Oh, it's going good. I'm getting rained on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I had a point to make. And that is all these bombs getting delivered on the very same day to all these different places. And I'm thinking, you know, that takes a coordinated effort. That's not one person. That's not one loony doing that. That is a coordinated effort. And the fact that none of these bombs went off, I mean, if it was a, a crazy conservative that did something like this, conservatives don't make threats. They, they carry something out. If it was a conservative, at least one or two of these would have gone off. I think this is a a liberal plot to undermine the election. Well, I, look, this is what I am. I think it's more than coincidental. Uh, whoever masterminded this whole thing thought, you know, instead of sending a bomb uh, to everybody that everybody knows in Democratic leadership, let's just do one or two. Maybe then in a few days we'll send another one. And then in a few days yeah. we'll send another one. But instead, they blanket Democratic leadership. Uh, and I guess I'm supposed to think, oh, my God, Republicans are so bad. And, you know, we need to support and let's all come together. This, this is the last gasp well of a dying party. Yeah, and, and, you know, if it was all in one city, I could see all these bombs getting delivered on the same day in one city. But in different states and everything, unless it's a coordinated effort by a group of people, it's not going to happen. 
Yeah, I, it's a, I'm I'm sorry. You know, I'm forgive me. I'm I've got all these TV monitors here in the studio, so I can tell you what's going on in real time. And of course, CNN and MSNBC and all the rest. You know, the anchors are sitting there, very stoic, with furrowed brow. Oh my God, what's going to happen next? Nothing. Not unless the Democrats decide to do something. Uh, it, it's this is this is really low, is it not? Oh, it's the lowest. It's the lowest. But, you know, this is the kind of stuff they do. They make threats, and that's all these non-explosive bombs are doing. All they are is a threat. Democrats make threats and don't carry them out. How many actors and actresses and and famous people said they were going to move if Trump got elected, and none of them did? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I'm watching, uh, of course, all the bomb squads. God forbid anybody gets hurt, you know, but... Um, they got all these bomb squads and all these police and all the rest of this stuff. I think we ought to send the bill for all of this in every state because I think Wasserman Schultz, I think she's in Florida. I know, um, you know, that crazy bat Maxine Waters, she's in Florida. Um, the rest are in D.C. and Westchester, which is beautiful, by the way, north of uh, New York City. Send that entire bill to the Democratic National Committee with a note that says, nice try. Um, I, I'm sorry. I, I think this is this is absolutely as bad as it gets. Robert in Fort Worth. Robert, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Robert? Pretty good, Rick. Thanks for taking my call. Hey, look, this is a total inside job. I mean, you know how I know that a Republican didn't send these bombs? Because they would have gone off. Republicans are smarter than that. This is a total inside job. And I think that the reason that it was done is to further aggravate these left-wing kooks out there that are always attacking conservatives in restaurants and at baseball field practices, et cetera. I mean, there's some crazy people out there, but when you make a plot like this to um, paint a picture like, woe's me, uh, oh, we're under attack, what do you think is going to happen? All the kooks are going to come out, and they're going to try and take it to the next level. You know, a lot, a lot of a lot of my listeners, maybe you included, uh, when we started talking about Maxine Waters calling for mobs to shout Republicans down and tell them they're not welcome here anymore, and Ted yeah. Cruz and Heidi getting uh, you know shouted out of a restaurant and all this goofy stuff, and then of course that uh, Scalise that was shot um, yeah. by that that deranged individual. Uh-huh. You know, what did you expect? Of course, it's going to go to another level, but this has nothing to do with that. This, I believe, was a very well-coordinated political stunt intended to turn the attention away from what's really going on in 13 days to something else. Absolutely, and it's a um, tactic of desperation as well. I mean, if you want my honest opinion on the state of the Democrat Party today, I think that they have entirely, uh, or there are several members of the leadership in that party that have sold themselves out to the communist Chinese, and they expect results. Uh, yeah, yeah. Things need to be things need to be delivered on, and uh, they're not being delivered on right now. So, I think that uh, these are desperation tactics uh, put in place to further stoke uh, anger into their. Uh, you know, kooky base and, you know, try it's, to start a civil war. You're, you're right, uh, Robert. It's just a matter of time before one of these Einsteins take it one step too far and somebody loses their life, uh, God forbid, uh, on either side of the aisle. Uh, I think this, uh, you, you don't get up one morning in Honduras or Ecuador or San Salvador. You don't get up one morning and go, you know what, it looks a beautiful day. I'm going to walk for the next 50 days uh, to the U.S. That ought to be fun. And I'll just gather up people as I go, hey, neighbor, how you doing? Follow me. It's like Forrest Gump on his run. Um, And now there's over 7,000 people. I don't think that happened by accident at all. Just like uh, the country of Mexico, their second largest source of income in 2010, 2011, whatever it was, uh, was money being sent into the country by people here working. They were putting up billboards three, four summers ago saying, if you get to the U.S., uh, you can get in. And people were coming. That's when we had all those diseases that we eradicated back in the 50s and 60s. All of a sudden, new outbreaks. Remember that? 
That was coordinated. This was too. I think the Democrats have lost their ever-loving minds. They got 7,000 people coming up from the South. Well, no, that's not working. Doesn't look like that's going to work. On all. I know. We'll send ourselves bombs. That'll get the, uh, the, the, the citizens' attention. Look, we're under attack. Help us. Vote for us. We need to get in power. Oh, good Lord. Why do you think everybody and their brother got a suspicious package today? Am I wrong? Your call straight ahead, 1-800-288-WBAP, 1-800-288-9227. Oh, man, I just can't believe how dumb they think we are. This is the news and talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be. A few hundred million more like me Just trying to keep it free yeah. Rick Roberts starts Rick Roberts starts right now Special report bomb scares Senator Jack Reed says mail bombs targeting six opponents of President Trump should be a wake-up call to all Americans. It's not just an individualized attack, the attack on our system of government, our Constitution. Yeah. President Trump condemned the attack and said there is no place for political violence in the U.S. The full weight of our government is being deployed yeah. to conduct this investigation and bring those responsible yeah. justice. for these despicable acts to justice. That's right. We will spare no resources or expense in this effort. One of the devices was sent to former CIA Director Brennan in care of CNN New York, which caused police to shut down the area around the Time Warner building. New York Police Counterterrorism Chief John Miller. It appears that an individual or individual sent out multiple similar packages. Police are now inspecting the devices, trying to track down who sent the packages. At this time, there have been no arrests made, and police say... They have no suspects in the case yet. I'm Mike Moss. Okay. Um, Wonderful report. And you held a straight face all the way through that. That's what is laughable to me. All these suspicious packages. All these, I'm here, live on the scene, and you can see behind me the suspicious package. Let's go back to the studio. Um, Yeah, I'm sorry. Not buying it. Not buying it. Maybe I've been in talk radio too long. You can't tell me that George Soros, the Clintons, the Obamas, Wasserman Schultz, CNN, John Brennan, who I'm, oh yeah, Maxine Waters, and Eric Holder all got packages on the same day. Ah, And none of them went off, thank God, but none of them went off. This was a giant political stunt. Mueller, are you tired of looking for stuff that doesn't exist? You're tired of looking for Russian collusion? Why don't you investigate this? Uh, let's go to Jay. And in, in right before the midterms, gosh, imagine that. Jay in Arlington. Jay, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Jay? Rick, Rick, Rick. I'm very disappointed with you today. Well, it wouldn't be the first time. Yeah, you knew you were going to catch a little flack over this one. I'm, I'm uh, sure I, I will. Yeah, I, I can't. But listen, a political stunt that involves the ATF and FBI with real bombs. There's some crazy people out there on right and the left. And it, 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 even Trump is acting presidential in this. But yet here come the conspiracy theories already when we don't have any information. Not, Why don't we you just know what? Wait? I will tell you this. I will tell you this. This would not be the first time a political party worked hand in glove with the DOJ or the FBI or anybody else, and I would have to be a neophyte to believe anything less. Um, it, it's too coincidental. 13 days before the midterms. It just happens that every uh, high-ranking Democratic official all gets something on the same day. And it just so happened, thank God, uh, that nothing went off. I mean, come on. Why don't you wait and see, Rick? Well, I am going to wait and see, but I'm not going to sit here with my thumb in my nose. Oh, my God. Oh, what, what do we do now? It's diversionary. It's deflection. It's what it was intended to do. All right. Uh, We still got 7,000 people, a mob coming up from Central America, and I'm sure they set that up, too. They choreographed that. And I have said it before, Jay, if I'm wrong, I'll be the first one to admit I'm wrong. 
I don't think I'm going to have to make that admission. Uh, Jay, good call. I appreciate it, even though uh, you're very disappointed in me. John in Fort Worth. John, thank you for waiting. How are you doing, Rick? Good. Hey, what what a future historian once said. Remember that election year when the Democrats sent bombs to themselves? <laughs> joke. <laughs> but, uh, you, hey. you were reeling me in. I, th- I was waiting to see if you were disappointed with me as well. <laughs> no. Can I plug a book? Sure. You care? No, I don't. Because I want to plug it to Jay. All right. Jay, you, you need to read Dan Bongino's Spygate. Just do it and then call Rick. Okay, Jay, did you get that? Bongino wrote a book, Spygate, read it, and then what, he's going to call back and he's not going to be disappointed it, anymore? Because, Rick, after reading that, I'm telling you, I, everything is possible. And and what I really want to say is this: the list is telling who's on the list. This is what I believe. I well, believe who, who would think? Who would think in their wildest imagination that Senate Democrats would sit there day after day and try to publicly lynch a guy, throwing away the rule of law? And they said as much. Chuck Schumer did, and Pelosi did, throwing away the presumption of uh, presumption of innocence until evidence is produced. Who thought that they would do that every day? I mean. That that hits at the very heart of the Constitution. Rick, isn't it funny that Soros is on the list, that he was one of them? Um, that, I mean, it's pretty telling that how close knit all of them are now. I mean, it's out in the open. We all we all knew it, but I'm just saying it's it's just it's pretty telling. And and I'm just my my thought is maybe just maybe this will be a lead for the feds to, to shut him down. Well, there's got to be a, there's got to be a crime against this. I'm sure. Sh- I'm sure. I'm, I'm I'm sure somebody uh, from the Democratic National Committee <clears throat> or one of these top uh, top uh, Democrats uh, like uh, Clinton or Obama probably made a call over to Soros House. Uh, yeah, George. Uh, when do you usually check the mail? Yeah, about ten o'clock in the morning. Yeah, uh, George. Why not? Why don't you just uh, wait until later in the afternoon to check your mail? Okay. And that's exactly what happened. And oh hey, my one, gosh, one there's thing, a bomb Rick, in your mailbox. Thing. Oh, what? The governor, like the that last uh, news story right before you came back on, the governor got a package, but it was something separate. That was the pizza for everybody involved. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. I'm laughing, obviously, because nobody got hurt, uh, because if it had been a real bomber trying to blow everybody up, I'm sure out of what? One, two, three, four, five, six, six different bombs. Is that about right? I'm sure out of six bombs, one of them would have gone off. I mean, if this had been Ted, what's his name? Kaczynski, um, somebody would have been harmed and nobody wants that. We don't condone this in any way, shape, or form, not even as a political stunt. As a matter of fact, I think somebody ought to be held to some level of accountability. I don't know, like uh, sweeping house uh, in the midterms. I mean, if they will sink to this, are there there no depths that they won't go to, to for political gain? All right. I can hear you out there right now. Oh, Rick, I am so disappointed in you. All right, 318 the time. Man, I've upset some folks. Um, How dare you make this accusation? Well, it's got more credibility than the one against Kavanaugh, doesn't it? Aren't you sick of this? They play us for fools, and if we don't fall in line, then something's wrong with us, not them. Um, Yeah, the uh, suspicious packages found at two of, uh, I guess, Wasserman's uh, office locations. Um, Yeah, and Trump is being presidential. He should be. I'm surprised he isn't saying saying the same thing I am. And, of course, uh, the Obama's house and... George Soros house and Eric Holder's house. Yeah, they just all happen to get one at the same time. Uh, Carl in Dallas. Carl, thank you for waiting. Hi. Thank you. Hi. 
Uh, I've got a, a, an observation on all your discussions and that. Yeah. I'm not too sure that the this whole scenario isn't a success because what they have done is they've been able to misdirect and be able to have the news media, you included, hype up everything that's going and miss focus on other things that are more important. Yeah, tell me what's getting, tell me what's more important today in today's news cycle. In today's news cycle, how about the mob down in uh, southern part uh, of uh, Mexico? Have you heard all three hours of the show today? I have, and, but you but I haven't you been on for it? three hours. Well, you've been on since uh, two o'clock. Uh, yes, and the show's but, not finished, so stick around. You'll probably hear the greatest hits. What you're looking for? Now, I let me. Now, don't be talking about this. Talk about what I want you to talk about. I'm not through with the mob. And this is directly related to the mob as far as I'm concerned. Carl, I appreciate the critique um, when uh, when Kevin, the program director, decides to retire. I'll let you know so you can come in and put in an application. All right? Um, ooh, that was ugly, wasn't it? Yeah, all right. Well, I got Chris on? All right. Most of you uh, probably don't know. Chris Salcedo and I have been friends for... God, I don't know. Chris, how long have we been friends? It's too long, right? <laughs> every day every day's a new day. Every... Uh, as far as I'm... So, yeah, no, it's been uh, since, well, at least 1999. Yeah, I think so. It, we've yeah. uh, known each other about, uh, I don't know, 18 years or so, and Chris is a great guy. I met Chris when he was working at Fox Television, and I was working at KFMB. And he's he has a show here. Uh, he's known as the Liberty Loving Latino from nine to eleven. And Chris, I heard your promo a little bit ago before I went to break. Um, I don't know how much of the show you've heard. I guess it's my cynical side. I think this is a gigantic political stunt perpetrated by the Democrats. But I'm interested to know what you think. No, I I concur. I find the timing very coincidental. I find it uh, anybody who's halfway paying attention and by the profile of the individual who is sending out all of these items, uh, it seems that they're paying somewhat attention. And if you were trying to have some sort of electoral advantage, the last thing you want to do is to take away from the narrative your previous caller had talked about, which is have been decidedly against the Democrats. Right. The whole blue wave is evaporating. And all of a sudden, you want to do this big favor for the Democrats and say, oh, all of our mobs, all of our hordes, all of our violence that we've been doing, oh, the Republicans do the same thing. You see, it's all <laughs> these Democrats getting the threat. This, this is just too neat and tidy for me. Yeah, but 13, I, I, 13 I, 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 days away from the midterms. I mean, you know, you got 7,000 people coming up from the South. You can't tell me that wasn't orchestrated in some form or fashion. And you and I both know. Um, because we both worked in, in the nation's capital. Uh, both sides, Republicans and Democrats, have the ability to reach out and, shall we call it, uh, without being specific, the darker side so they can get an arm's length distance. And I'm not trying to be a conspiracy nut, but they know how to get things done. I, I'm not falling for it this time. Sure. And you know what? And, and we have to leave room for the scenario, too. And we uh, outlined a little bit of this this morning on the show. And it's this idea that there's somebody out there who's seen Maxine Waters and Hillary Clinton and Eric Holder and all these left-wingers call for violence. We've seen Antifa attacking prayer marches out in Seattle. We've seen uh, a ricin sent to the president of the United States and sent to uh, General Mattis. And in a basket of biased press just completely ignores all of that. And they, there could be somebody out there that has just snapped and said, you know what? I, I'm going to perpetrate some violence of my own. But isn't it funny, Rick, that all of the all of the two years of violence from the left and the permission given by the left wing media that, and their suppression of all of that, that doesn't get any coverage. Right. But <laughs> the, min, the minute some of these bombs, allegedly, we don't know what kind of devices they are yet get sent to high-profile Democrats, oh, it's wall-to-wall -wall news. Wall-to-wall -wall news, and, and one of the callers brought this up, and I hadn't even thought, I'm looking at it right now. Uh, when was the last time a bomb or suspected bomb was sent someplace, and within an hour, full-color pictures of the device are slapped on national television? Come on. 
I know. It, it does strain credulity, doesn't it? it? Well, yeah. I mean, they don't know if other bombs are on the way or copycats or any. It's just, oh, man. It, it, the cynical side of Rick Roberts is on full display this afternoon. <laughs> what do you got going tomorrow? Uh, well, pretty much this. Uh, we'll be talking about that. So, uh, yeah, ab- about the latest developments. And you know what? I think they might zero in on this guy or guys or however many people very quickly because this was a sloppy job. And, and you've been around law enforcement long enough to know just how, how easy this, this, this guy will most likely or guys be caught. Yep. by judging by the volume and what actually he's done. Yeah, and we said it earlier, they'll find some half-baked idiot someplace and, uh, oh, no, I'm not political, I'm not for either side. As a matter of fact, I don't even vote. I mean, you know, you could, this thing <laughs> writes itself. All right, Indeed. Chris, we'll see you tomorrow at 9. All right, buddy, thanks. All right, Chris Alcedo, everybody, the liberty-loving Latino, 9 to 11 right here on News Talk, 820 WBAP. To all public officials of all partisan affiliations, don't encourage violence. Don't encourage hatred. Don't encourage attacks on media. Uh, You could disagree, but you have to show respect for people and air your disagreements peacefully. That's what Republicans do. Please, give me the uh, Maxine Waters calling out mobs to harass Trump officials. Um, The nut job that tried to... uh, murder republicans playing baseball um i mean hillary clinton well there can be no civility until we get in power Uh, all of this it just goes down the list give me the same thing for republicans it's it's not in their dna they're not wired the same yeah there's an odd idiot everywhere but it's they don't run in the same circles you know suspicious packages god Thank God that nobody got hurt. It just seems to me, I don't know that they were designed to go off in the first place. Just look really scary. I don't know. I'm not an ordinance expert. I didn't see them. Um, you can watch, you can look at them on television. That seems a bit odd. It seems a bit odd this happens, uh, what, 13 days before the midterms. It seems a bit odd when the 7,000 strong mob coming up from Central America uh, is not getting the same type of coverage it did last time. Gail King from uh, NBC or wherever, she's not out there in her little camo outfit interviewing moms and babies. It didn't work for them this time. Uh, it just seems odd. Everything seems odd. Uh, the list of people receiving the packages, George Soros, the Clintons, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, CNN President uh, the Obamas, um, John Brennan, ended up at Camilla Harris's place, um, Eric Holder, Maxine Waters. Doesn't that seem odd to you? You don't have to be a cynical talk show host like myself. It just seems odd, doesn't it? I, my email is going through the roof. It's levitating. Uh, this is from James. Would not surprise me if some crazy dim or lib sent these packages to drum up sentiment right before the election. Um, this one uh, from uh, Ron. How convenient for all these liberals to receive these bomb threats on the same day and not one go off. Seems to me they especially, CNN, are looking for sympathy. That's Ron from Decatur. Um, another one, Rick, how can you be at odds with the bombs? The way I see it, it can go either way. Face it, conservatives are fed up. We've been taking this crap for nine years or longer. You're right. It's a possibility. I could be wrong, and I'll be the first one to say, you know, didn't call that one right. Um, this one from Tom, isn't it funny how all of a sudden the shoe's now on the other foot when it comes to violence and the Democrats are stunned? The real question is, will this be a sobering moment for Democrats to stop their violence toward Republicans? You got to wonder. Not only that, will it cool the rhetoric between parties in the Senate and the House? I doubt it. Uh, another one. Uh, I can't, don't have time to go through them all. This is from Connie. It's a setup. Wait and see to help the Dems and hurt the Republicans. And Rick, I promise you, I'm not a cynic. Uh, that's from Connie. Here's another one. Sorry, Rick. I don't know what that means. That's from Donovan. Um, another one. Rick, isn't it obvious? This is just clock boy. Remember him out in, I think it was Arlington, wasn't it? We talked about it earlier. Ahmad Mohammed, um, 
sending his favorite Democrats one of his homemade clocks. That's from John. I'd forgotten about that kid. Hey, Rick, you know it's fake because there will never be an arrest. That's from Tim. Um, and it goes on and on and on. This is Roger in Dallas. Roger, thanks for waiting. Hi. Hi, Rick. I love you. I've been sitting here, you know, just uh, absorbing everything that you're saying. It is absolutely your Right on spot, 100%. A couple of things that I wanted to say. One, the person who sent these bombs has got to be the most insane person that there is. To think, with all the security that the ex-presidents have and that Soros would have and so forth, that he could get a bomb even close to them. You know, uh, there, there's absolutely no way. Uh, with the uh, Secret Service and the FBI you know, protect them. They've got, they have the highest security in the world. Well, see, uh, see that, that's another thing. Who among us believe the Clintons or the Obamas or the former attorney general of the United States or George Soros, who, who among us think they just uh, put on their bathrobe and their slippers and trot out and get the mail? I, I, who totally, thinks that? To, totally correct. There's another thing that I wanted to, to hit on real quick. Uh, CNN, after President Trump spoke, I turned on the channel of CNN, and I was sitting there thinking, how many different ways and how long are they going to sit there and criticize President Trump on what he said about these bombs? And sure enough, for at least 30 minutes, there were four or five of them sitting there saying, oh, he didn't say this, he didn't say that, we wanted him to say this. <laughs> He's President Trump has got to change his tone and you know, uh, about the press and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, they just went on. Uh, it, it was absolutely despicable and a bunch of hypocrites up there. I, I thought he was pretty presidential. I mean, certainly he, he's more mainstream than I am. Um, you oh, know, don't you? Oh, definitely. He was, I think he hit every, every single, you know, everything that he could say, you know. I don't know. Every time that the, President Trump says anything about, Whatever, any event or anything that happens, CNN comes back, and I've heard them, I don't know how many times, oh, he should have said this, and he didn't condemn them for this, and et cetera, et cetera. I mean, they just criticized the heck out of him. Yeah, well, it, it yes, wouldn't pathetic. matter. It would not matter, Roger. What, he could go up in Marine One and hover above the CNN headquarters in New York and just push out bales and bales of $100 bills, <laughs> and somebody would say, well, he's interrupting the flight path of the pigeons. I, I mean, there's going to be somebody <laughs> always criticize. I, this is what he said. I thought it was pretty good. We have to unify. We have to come together and send one very clear, strong, unmistakable message that acts or threats of political violence of any kind have no place in the United States of America. What's wrong with that? How can you criticize that? Oh, he didn't talk long enough. He should have raised his voice. The volume should have been different. Uh, what's wrong with him? I, I mean, they're going to find something. They're going to find something. It doesn't matter. Uh, let's go to uh, Dan in North North Carolina. Is that right? Dan's listening in North Carolina. How you doing? Uh, so far, still got a pulse. Would be hard to explain otherwise. <laughs> What's going on? Uh, personally, I think that with all the people that received one of these quote unquote bombs, uh, they're the entire group of people that tried to quote unquote fundamentally change America. Fundamentally and, change it. Well, that's what that's what Obama wanted to do. He didn't, exactly. Yeah, and he's also considered the divider in chief. Yeah. Well, I call him. They the, didn't. They didn't. They didn't get the results that they wanted from his presidency, and because uh, Hillary Clinton didn't get elected, they didn't get to continue his little legacy. So what they're wanting is a complete division, and they would love George Soros would love to see another civil war in this country. Oh, absolutely. That's that's what Soros goes to bed dreaming about. Uh, you're right. I appreciate the call from North Carolina, Dan. Take care of yourself. Um, look, the mob didn't work. Now, stay with me for a second. Remember last time? Rem go with me. Once upon a time, there were hundreds, if not thousands, of refugees coming from Ecuador. That's right. Say it with me. Ecuador. Guatemala, 
fun to say, isn't it? Guatemala. And they all came to the United States, and President Trump put the children in cages. That's right. Separated them from the parents. So for the next month, all I heard was President Trump is is ripping suckling babies away from their mother's bosom, and oh my God, this is not an American value, and blah, 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 blah. It seemed to work for about the first three weeks. You know, until people, wait a minute, wait a minute, that kid in the chain link thing there, that was when Obama was president. All of a sudden it came unraveled, right? Because it was garbage to begin with. But they thought they'd get the same type of reaction from the Americans going to the polls in 13 days. Didn't work. As a matter of fact, uh, Trump's numbers have gone up. I would say that's probably the genesis for even going further with the supposed bomb scare. Now, I hate to be so cynical about it, and I, I mean it. If I'm wrong, I'll say, man, I call this wrong. I just don't see that I'm wrong. After witnessing that public political lynching I saw in the Senate with Democrats throwing out the rule of law, basically trying to trying to destroy a man and his family, for political gain, these folks, they won't, they won't stop at anything. <laughs> if there was any other way to explain this, I would be talking about it. I don't see another way. I will say, and you will hear other law enforcement officials say, uh, that we will not let this type of terroristic behavior uh, interrupt our lives, and we are going to do everything we possibly can uh, to ensure that there is a swift closure in this case. And, of course, um, Hillary Clinton was the recipient of one of these little October surprise packages, is what she had to say. A troubling time, isn't it? Yes. And it's a time of deep divisions, and we have to do everything we can to bring our country together. We also have to elect <laughs> candidates who will she try to do the She let the cat out of the bag. If she would have stopped it, we need to do everything we can to bring the country together. You know what? I can't argue with that, even though it's Hillary. She's right. She's right. But then she just couldn't help herself. That, 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 that seedy underbelly of American politics wormed its way out. Now, now, David, do it again, and I'll tell you where to stop, all right? Okay, this is Hillary Clinton reacting to the October surprise packages uh, that went out to her and all her friends, all right? Now, I'll tell you where to stop, and if she would have stopped right then, I would have said, hey, you know what? I'm with you. I'm with you right there. I understand exactly what you're talking about. But she couldn't help herself. The greedy little politician, the power-hungry persona wormed its way out. Go ahead, start it. It is a troubling time, isn't it? It is. Yes, it is. And it's a time of deep divisions. Yes. And we have to do everything we can to bring our country together. Stop. We I agree with that. I agree with that. We have to do everything we can, even though the deep divisions have been created for the, the lion's share by Democrats, I would still agree with Hillary Clinton. And then she couldn't help it. She had to, she had to politicize it. And be, she did everything but say, go out and vote for the Democrat in your city. This is what she said. Together. We also have to elect candidates who will try to do the same. Okay, what the hell does that have to do with this? With the bomb packages? If you listen, you know, there's a, one of my favorite movies, um, Robert Duvall, uh, Kevin Costner, which is not a great actor, but he was good in this. Uh, what was it? Uh, they, were, they were running a cattle drive. Open range. Thank you, Randy. Uh, open range. And... I won't go through the whole thing, but there was a point where Kevin Costner was talking to Robert Duvall, which he called boss. He worked for him. He's, and he was talking to the kid they had before the kid got shot. Uh, you know, he said, a man will gen generally tell you his bad intentions if you know how to listen. And that's a, Hillary Clinton was the epitome of that. 
She'll generally tell you her bad intentions if you just know how to listen. It wasn't about bringing the country together. It wasn't about the country being divided. It was about, look, poor me, woe is me. We want to bring the country together, but good Lord, we can't do it when Republicans are sending us bombs. Come on. All right, let's go to J.D. J.D. in Dallas. How you doing, J.D.? Just fine. I would like to thank Hillary for uh, recommending to elect Republicans this year. Um, <laughs> yeah. And... I'm also reminded of uh, Whoopi Goldberg when the uh, anonymous hit piece hit the New York Times, and she said it's probably an inside job from the White House to make the president look like a victim because he was taking a lot of heat on all sides about some other things. So I think that's the idea they got, and they're using that. Uh, Also, uh, the last thing, if you're upset with those people, that you're going to do is send these packages two weeks before an election to hurt your side's chances. Yeah, does that make any sense? No. Zero. It makes Uh, no sense. There's nothing to be gained by that. And, and, you know, if if it were the target were, you know, Democrats or liberals that upset Republicans, Nancy Pelosi would have got a bunker buster on a forklift. (laughs) It just, just, well, see, that's what I was, in all the years I've been in this business, and immersed in the news. And from time to time, people sent suspicious suspicious packages, and there were bombs and the like. They never took a color picture of it and slapped it up on national television within the hour. I mean, they don't know if more bombs are out there. They don't know anything. They never did that. And then all of a sudden with this, it's like, hey, hey, look over here. Here's the bomb. No kidding. I got this in the mail. Um, I got something from a uh, postal service person and I don't have time to do it right now. I'll do it as soon as we come back, um, which kind of paints a different light in this. Um, thank God, and let me make sure you understand, I don't want anybody getting hurt. Not Democrats, Republicans, men, women, uh, nobody. I mean, we should be above that. I, I would think as a civilized society, or to the degree we are civilized, I would think that we're beyond hurting one another with violence. I mean, there's always going to be that odd character out there that's wrapped too tight and spins off at some point. This doesn't have the earmarks of that, especially with the number of people and the people that were receiving these bombs. 13 days before the, or explosive devices, I guess I should say, uh, 13 days before the midterms, with the 7,000-plus um, mob coming up from Central America, it just looks like more of the same. Desperate, desperate, pathetic attempts by the Democrats to be relevant. Good, bad, or indifferent, just be relevant. That's what it looks like to me. We'll find out what you think. 1-800-288-WBAP. And if I have to come in here and turn this microphone on and say, man, I was as wrong as the sun coming up in the east, I will do that. You know that. I don't think I am wrong. 1-800-288-WBAP. 1-800-288-9227. This is News Talk. 820 WBAP. This is the News and Talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Yeah. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. We'll continue to monitor these investigations. And those responsible will be brought to justice. All right. At uh, 404 the time. It is for, why am I laughing? I, I guess I should not expect anything different. And I know I'm going to catch a ton of heat. Well, Rick, you need to <clears throat> show some uh, respect for pipe bombs. Or they're still calling them suspected explosive devices. I, I'm sorry, the the conditions, the people, the timing, none of it adds up. But even worse than that, in his first public remarks on the, all these packages, which targeted Democratic figures, uh, the Clintons, the Obamas, Eric Holder, 
Maxine Waters, George Soros, CNN. Um, so the president made a statement. And it sounded, oh, by the way, they're sort of walking this back now. They say, well, they're being inspected. They're suspected to be explosives. And a major federal investigation is now underway. What did the, the president say? It, it say? He said, and I'm quoting, we have to unify. We have to come together. He was at a bill signing for opioid uh, legislation. Uh, he went on to say acts or threats of political violence of any kind have no place in the United States of America. Well, then the usual suspects, Senate Democratic leader Chucky Schumer and his female counterpart, House Democratic leader Nancy Pelosi, would you like to know what they said about this? It kind of shows you, if you read between the lines, what they were trying to attain. They came out in a joint statement saying that Trump's words ring hollow until he reverses his statements that condone acts of violence. Then when I got back up in my chair after reading that, I thought to myself, gee whiz. Who's been calling for people to shout down Republicans? Who's been calling for people to mob up against Republicans? Who's been uh, making the statements there can be no civility unless we're back in power? Who's been... Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi have to be two of the dumbest people on planet Earth. They have to be. Either that or, you know, they're the token... Well, what's the word I'm looking for? I, it, it's just so asinine. Time and time again, the president has condoned physical violence and divided Americans with his words and his actions. Okay, there's your first tip-off. Where are they going to go with this? Where are they going to go with this? We all got bombs because your president is condoning violence. Forget Maxine Waters, forget Chuck Schumer, forget Hillary Clinton, forget all the rest. It's your president that made this happen. He supported Congressman, what's his name, GM Ford? I can't recall. The guy that body slammed the reporter, remember that? Uh, The neo-Nazis who killed a young woman in Charlottesville. They're still harping on that. Basically, they're going in a... The Democrats are like a dog chasing their its tail, trying to find any semblance of relevancy before the midterms. All right, I told you, I got a uh, an email uh, from... Uh, I won't give her name. Uh, I'm not even going to give her first name here. Uh, but she's been with the Postal Service for 34 years, she says. Hey, Rick, love your show. Listen every day while delivering my rural route. Just a thought. After 9-11, USPS, United States Postal Service, issued strict airline security guidelines concerning parcels. We as carriers cannot accept anything over 13 ounces that has stamps affixed to the parcels. Those parcels have to be turned in at a retail service window Computer-generated meter stamps are then attached. Those meter stamps help identify the origin of the parcel. We have training ad nauseum over airline security. Click and ship labels also help track mail parcels. No way. After being with the USPS for 34 years, no way these parcels going to Democrats were stamped parcels that entered the mainstream. My belief is is that it was a Democrat plant. Uh, let's go to John in Dallas. John, thank you for waiting. Hi. Hey, Rick. Great show. Well, all of them are great shows, but this is especially great. I went to bed last night thinking, you know, there's something wrong with this. I've worked in politics most of my adult life, and this is just completely and totally odd, and uh, Republicans don't do this. And uh, I woke up this morning, and I thought, well, dummy, it's a scam. Because it was highly paid. I mean, this is expensive. This took a lot of planning and so on. They're sending a bomb to people who, all of whom have security people who go through the mail. And this was this was done so that they would have a reason to get out and yell, see what they tried to do to us. 
but not one of these things is going to go off. I promise you, they're all they're all duds. But I, how they wired them, it doesn't matter. Does it? Uh, it you know, according to the news gathering agencies like MSNBC and CNN and the Alphabet channels, it doesn't matter. I'm glad, thank God, nothing went off. I don't even know if they're capable of going off. It just seems awfully suspect to me. These people. This laundry list of Democrats, 13 days before the midterms, 7,000 people making their way up from Central America that's working against Democrats instead of what they thought working for them. It's just, I think it's as plain as the nose on our face exactly what happened here. It should be, and, and you could not be more right. If you were more right, You'd be at the top of a mountain with weird music in the background. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, when, the first thing I wanted to do this morning was, okay, I want to hear what Rick has to say about this. And and I totally agree with you. This is a scam, and this gives them it's, – it's a genius scam. It gives the, the Democrats this thing that they can go out and cry about. Oh, well, to see, they tried to kill a bunch of us and – and uh, they've called and, and it's your president and his condoning of violence since he was elected, which has caused this this climate of violence dividing the country. It's Trump that's done this. They're, of course, they're going to forget Maxine Waters and Hillary Clinton and Chuck Schumer and all the re- they're going to forget all of that. And guess what? The media, the lamestream media they work hand in glove with is going to forget it, too. This is all going to be dumped on the front step of the White House. You watch and see. Totally. I think you're totally right. And uh, I, I love your show, but especially this one. All right, John, I appreciate the kind words. Please don't be a stranger. 12 minutes after the hour, 412 the time. I'm Rick Roberts, News Talk 820 WBAP. From that cabinet, in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station, you get out and you create a crowd. And you push back on them. And you tell them they're not welcome anymore, anywhere. That we owe the American people to be there for them, for, the, for their financial security, respecting the dignity and worth of every person in our country. And if there's some um, collateral damage for some others who do not share our view, well, so be it. But it shouldn't be our original purpose. (laughs) Are you kidding me? You know, did she have a synopsis in her brain that just didn't fire at the right time? Now, if there's collateral damage to some of those that don't agree with our views, then so be it. Yeah, what is that again, Chuck? And she came out today and was blaming Trump for the divide. It's you. Oh, man. Uh, uh, Just got this. And by the way, if you can't get in on the talk lines, I know it's been very difficult today. You you can email me, Rick Roberts Show at WBAP.com. Two S's, Rick Roberts and then show at WBAP.com. And if uh, you didn't catch the entire show, you can get it all on the podcast page. No, I don't make any money off that. Uh, just simply go to WB as in boy, AP.com, WBAP.com. Uh, go to shows, uh, click on it. There's a drop down. You'll see my name. Hit that and boom, you're right there. Every show, every hour of every show for the last two years is uh, is there <clears throat> then down at the bottom are the standalone pieces and i think every day we put up uh, you know something we highlight I, good luck i don't know where you're gonna find the highlight today every segment uh just got this in rick listening from northwest oklahoma i agree with your assessment of the package bombs i would also be surprised if they were functional the left is getting more desperate now this is the part i want want you to get a hold of in this email the left is getting more desperate every single day as they lose support and with it, power. It's obvious that our country turns in the right direction. We are in for a rough ride. It will be more than worth it in the end. You think so? You think we're in for a rough ride? I think he's right. Um, oh, by the way, who was that? Uh, I'll give you the first name. That was Kendall. Um, I think he's absolutely on point. Uh, here's another one from Robert. 
Uh, Rick, I'm with you. As soon as all this started unfolding, I thought this is just another ploy by the left to distract everyone away from the midterm elections and the illegal invasion caravan. These fools will try anything, including trying to gain sympathy from voters that may be on the fence. Um, Rick, and that was, uh, what was that? That was from, uh, Robert. Uh, this one, this is a complete fraud, Rick. There is no way these packages were ever in the mail stream. I can give numerous reasons, but the main reason is all the postage stamps rather than being metered for size. Sounds like this is a postal worker based on that last email. Uh, this would have been rectified by returning to sender. And this is from, uh, I don't have a name on this. All right. Uh, let's go to, uh, where am I going? Gene in Temple, Texas. Gene, thanks for waiting. Hi. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, Rick, I can't help but uh, agree with you wholeheartedly about the any moral, good moral person would not want to have anything damaged against anybody else. But uh, I think we're all getting worked up over nothing if we take a page from the playbook from the other side. Because as you so well played a while ago, Hillary Clinton said, well, if someone doesn't agree with you and there's just a point in time when we have to not be civil and then you just played Pelosi where she says, well, if there's collateral damage, so be it. So (laughs) why are we getting worked up? You know, after 26 years of doing this, I'm sorry, I'm still amazed that an elected official can say that in front of God and everybody else and get away with it. Low IQ elected official. You have to put the qualifier in there. Okay, you're right. But, you know, we we need to talk about something that's important. Like, you know, I was wondering, Rick, what's your favorite variety for fall tomatoes? (laughs) Uh, Let's see. Uh, I kind of like the hothouse myself. Well, that's a good one. That's a good. It's it's tolerant to the weather. Just about anything um, I can get on the vine, I'll take. (laughs) God bless you, Rick. This is ridiculous. Oh, it's nuts. It's absolutely, it's beyond the pale. Beyond the pale. And I don't know how many complaints probably went into management today. Rick is being, um, not being serious about something that could have taken lives. Well, could have, would have, should have, and 10 bucks will get you a cheap cup of Starbucks coffee. Uh, I mean, it was obvious. Uh, The Clintons, the Obamas, Eric Holder, Maxine Waters, Wasserman Schultz, um, who do I forget? Oh, George Soros. How can I forget this guy? Uh, everybody on the same day, but not one bomb went off. And I thank God for that. And we should, we, we all should, but nothing, none of these exploded and they're under investigation. And what's happened? The media outlets that have been working with the Democrats like they were Siamese twins have already blown this thing uh, into proportion. I'm sorry. I'm not towing that line. I don't believe it. I, I, I just don't believe it. And as I said, when the stories come out, then they will. If I'm wrong, I'll be the first to say I'm wrong. In the meantime, don't get played. You got 7,000 people coming up uh, to the U.S. border. You think that happened by accident? As a matter of fact, uh, what was the guy? There was some guy interviewing some guy at the border, right? Is it, and he thinks, uh, he thinks Trump's crazy. Uh, well, this is how that went. Nosotros somos gente. We are an honorable people. We're workers. Would he call a group of kids terrorists? A group of women who need help? We're asking for his support. But of course, we know he has no conscience. He's crazy. Yeah, well, I, I, t- I tell you what, uh, Guido, he's our president. And what about the Homeland Security report that said there are Middle Easterners we can't identify among the 7,000? What about the MS-13 gang members and other gang members that are mixed in with the 7,000? You know, I don't give a damn what you think about our president. You know, you live under him. People are working. People are saving money. People are hanging on to their homes. The rest of the world for the first time in a long time, are not treating the people of America like we're a doormat. You want to come here, come here legally. I'll buy you a cup of coffee. But if you think you can just kick open the door, hey, we're here, sorry. Most of us don't go that way. You cannot be civil with a political party that wants to destroy what you stand for, what you care about. That's why I believe if we are fortunate enough 
to win back the House and or the Senate, yes. that's when civility can start again. Ah. It is a troubling time, isn't it? Yeah. And it's a time of deep divisions, divisions yes. and we have to do everything we can to bring our country together. We also have to What's that? elect ah. candidates who will try to do the same. Yeah, that's right. Um, if we take back the House and or the Senate, that's when civility will begin again. What a bunch of narcissistic idiots. You know, I, it is my, my sincere wish that no one of any political stripe is ever harmed. I would think in the year 2018, we had learned enough where we could rise above violence to make a point. Evidently not. I think this whole thing was a political stunt. And I would imagine, and the Republicans have those contacts, just like the Democrats have those contacts, they reach out, hey, the guy, give him a call. Need him to do something. Always an arm's length distance. And we get played like a cheap guitar out of a pawn shop. Um, sorry to be so it's so cynical. That's what I think. Brian, Brian, thank you for waiting. Hi. Hey, Rick, how you doing? Good. All right. You know, I was just thinking here, it wasn't too long ago. Um, I didn't even know I was a conservative, right? Okay, I, I can Brian, I can barely hear you. Okay, hold on a second. I'm on a phone. Can you hear me now? Yeah, much better. Okay. Um, it wasn't too long ago that, you know, I found out I was a conservative, right? And I listened to this political stuff and all that. So I started thinking, I said, you know, these Democrats are stupid. And I made the mistake of telling my wife, you know. And I said, you know, Brian, you really shouldn't say that kind of stuff. And I said, you know, you're right. You really are. <laughs> wait, a, wait a minute. Wait a you minute. Know what? Happy wait, wife, wait. happy life. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Well, you know what I found out, though, today, after today? What? Democrats have not even reached stupid. They're looking up at it. Uh, you know, it, 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 they haven't gotten to stupid yet. I've thought this through, Brian. And if they were doing this to garner sympathy for the Democrats, or you've already heard what Pelosi and Schumer said immediately following the president's speech, uh, that, uh, you know, this can never happen as long as this president <laughs> is dividing America. You already see where they're going with this. They can, oh, yeah. This, this is so transparent. It's like, it's like me looking through the glass into Randy and David. I mean, I'm just not buying it. I'm not, and if I'm wrong, I'll say so, but I don't think so. I I heard a, a few, two of them that got bombs. When I was listening to your show here and I heard like there's 10, 15 or whatever Democrats had bombs, I said, wait a minute, there's something wrong here. Not one Republican got it and not one of them went off. There's something really fishy here. Right. Well, that's supposed to make you believe, Brian, all oh, those, those violent Republicans because they have such a violent history, right? I mean, Democrats do. I can go through the list. Well, name one Republican act of violence. When have they chased down a, a Democratic lawmaker or chased a Democrat and his wife out of a restaurant? Uh, I mean, it, it just doesn't happen. It's a different set of rules. It's, it's yeah, it's a two-edged sword, to be sure. It's a double standard. But you wait. I mean, CNN... I mean, they, they've got to be soiling themselves over this. Bombs sent to CNN, Clintons, Obamas, and others, an act of terror. In case you didn't know, it's an act of terror. It's their last gasp before the midterms. You know, I'll try to settle down, but this is it. This is the Democrats' last gasp attempt at swaying votes before the midterms. And I don't know why any of us are surprised. I know it's very difficult to get in. I told you you could email Rick Roberts Show, two S's, Rick Roberts Show at WBAP.com. Got this in. Rick, I told my son two hours ago I thought they were fake bombs. I think I heard on Fox that uh, the picture was taken by a reporter from CNN. Oh, surprise. That's why it's out there. Also heard that a return address 
on one was Debbie Wasserman Schultz. That's right. Um, I would hate to be the guy or girl that sent them. I hope the FBI isn't in on this, but it wouldn't surprise me. That's that's a sad commentary on society that we even think that. Now, Rick, conspiracy. Let's ask ourselves. Oh, by the way, uh, her name was, uh, that was, uh, I can't, can't pronounce it. Um, uh, next one. Uh, let's ask ourselves who exactly is it saying the bombs are real? The same complicit DOJ, FBI, whomever. Some years ago, one could buy alarm clocks that were fashioned as bombs. Cardboard tubes with sand for weight were connected to digital clocks with red and blue wires. A novelty for sure. This explains why none of them went off. This is from Chris. Chris, thank you. Um, Rick, I agree with everything you're saying. Keep talking. Love your show. That's Jane. Well, thank you. Uh, Rick, good afternoon. Could you please add new codes um, I have a lot to say. I don't have any codes. Um, another one, Rick, I keep this, uh, I'll keep this short in regards to the bombs. What you have said about the Dems pulling a political stunt was the very first thing that popped into my head when I first heard about it. You're spot on, I think. Um, let's go to Linda in Little Elm. Linda, thank you for waiting. Hi. Oh, no problem. I just had a quick comment. Um, Hillary's right. All of this violence and all of this threats and bombs and all that stuff, when the Democrats finally take over the House and the Senate, it'll quit. They'll have their way. <laughs> yeah, she just said, well, we can restore civility once we take back the House and or the Senate. But I think you're probably uh, more accurate. Once the, these petulant kids get their way, then the tantrum will subside, will it not? Yeah, yeah. I think you're right, Linda. They don't, let's hope they don't get their way. I just pray. Well, yeah. I mean, to, you know, we have a, I don't know, if I, you just feel like screaming sometimes, don't you? Every time I see that Beto commercial, I mean, they all look alike now. He's just standing there, you know, jittery back and forth, all these hand movements. And I want to tell him, just settle down. Just settle down. Um, all right. Let's go to uh, Larry in Henri- Henrietta. Larry, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Larry? Hey, I'm doing great. I just got two points. Uh, first point is Republicans want to lock them up, not blow them up. Well, that's true, yeah. And the second point is look at the friends of Bill Ayers. Who are they? The <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good point. Very good point. I hadn't thought of that. Uh, Larry, please don't be a stranger. Let's go to Matt in Sherman. Matt, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Matt? I'm doing great. How are you doing, sir? Good. Hey, I talked to you a little while back uh, over something that I had some block walkers, Democrat block walkers. Long story short, I changed their opinion because they didn't know what they were talking about. Their campaign didn't even tell them they were lying to their own people. Um, You said a second ago, it's an act of terror. You know how they were saying it was an act of terror on the news. It's it's more than it's it's a load of crap. Well, it it, it wasn't it wasn't on the news. It was on CNN. So take it. That's. Yeah, my bad. You got me on that one. Um, <laughs> but, uh, no, there's there's a hole. And every every time they try to do something like this, this false flag crap, there's always a hole that's so obvious. How can you not see it? Uh, the, only pe- the only way you can't see it is if you refuse to even try to find it. I mean, like with this whole postage deal you've been talking about and the return to sender, there's such an obvious hole in everything they do. I just I don't see how people can fall for this crap. And I don't think one thing I disagree with you on is I do not think that this is going to be the last thing they try before the midterms. Me and my wife, we see something happen. We look at each other and we go, what's next? I mean, you can set your watch to it just about now, nowadays, you know, and and if they don't win this thing, which I seriously doubt they will, it's just going to get worse. I mean, this, it's going to get worse if they lose all the way up to the 2020 election. And if they lose that, it's going to all hell's going to break loose. Uh, I think you're right about the election uh, election loss. I don't know what they could come up. Well, they came up with this in one day. We've got 13 days until the midterms. Um, if If this show was any indication, I have yet... To talk to one person, oh, yeah, Rick, this is real. Uh, those Republicans, uh, they're after the Democrats. Nobody believes that. I mean, yeah. it, it's going to be obvious in about 24 hours. Whoops, this didn't work either. Now what? Exactly, exactly. It's, it's What's next? 
set your watch to it. Give it give it a couple of days. They'll come up with something else. Uh, great call, Matt. I appreciate it. Don't be a stranger. 442 the time. This is News Talk, 820 WBAP. 7 the time. Welcome to the Court of Public Opinion, the Rick Roberts Show, with you every day, Monday through Friday from 2 to 5, your afternoon drive. And everybody, this is uh, Denise from Midland, Texas. Denise, how you doing? Great, Rick. How are you? I'm well, thanks. Hey, um, call me the queen of logic, but there's two two points also on this that drive me nuts. Is if I'm an average citizen and I'm going to the post office and I'm going to put seven packages in the mail going to New York, Washington, Florida, wherever they're going, they're not all going to arrive exactly the same day at the same time of day. It just doesn't happen. Number two is, as an average citizen, I don't believe I would have access to George Soros's personal address or Hillary Clinton's or any of those people. So that just reeks to me that there's some kind of an inside thing going on. Yeah, I, I'm with you. Somebody emailed me earlier. I won't go back to it because I'm short on time. Um, why is it a bomber can send six different bombs to, as you said, New York and D.C. and Florida and all over the the country, and they all get there at the same time, but none of my Christmas cards get there within the same week? How did that? Exactly. How, how's that work, <laughs> Denise? Exactly. <laughs> good, good call, Denise. Well thought out. I appreciate that. Uh, let's go to Al in Garland. Al, thanks for waiting. How you doing? Oh, I'm fine, Rick. Uh, always hear your show, and I agree with you and all the callers, basically, 100%. But one thing that stands out that I don't think anybody has said is one of the persons that got or received uh, the package or the bomb or whatever was Debbie Wasserman Schultz. She's kind of irrelevant in the scheme of things, you know, with all the other ones. You know, she kind of stands out as not being – important you know what i'm saying well i think and and again the the information is coming in bits and pieces um but it was addressed to someone else with a return of uh, debbie wasserman schultz and that's why she ended up getting the package oh okay okay i I missed that guy okay yeah Yeah, as a matter of fact i I think several of the packages uh had the same um return which was one of schultz's offers okay okay i i kind of missed that but i'll I started thinking about it, and I said, she's, she's not in the scheme of things. You know what I'm saying? No, and it, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I'm I'm with you. The uh, oh, it was addr- That's John Brennan. It was addressed to John Brennan um, at CNN, and um, then uh, some, uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz ended up getting – uh, somebody else's package because of the return address. Uh, they'll come up with something tonight. The whole story will change tomorrow, I- I'm sure. Um, good call, though. I appreciate it, Al, very, very much. Kevin in Dallas. Kevin, how you doing? Good. How are you doing, buddy? Good. Can you believe these people? No, I, I mean, can't. The thing, about, the thing about it is we got to remember anything they've done wrong, they're going to accuse us of doing it. They already know how to do all this bad stuff. And it's amazing how Debbie Washington Schultz is in the mix because she's always been in the mix. And I can't wait till Jeff Sessions attacks those people. It's going to be a great day in American history. Yeah. If he's looking for something uh, to investigate, something of substance, uh, here you go, Jeff. Get after it. <laughs> exactly. But uh, hey, I love what you do, man. You're awesome. Your 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 listeners love you, especially the women. Uh, but anyway, the guys do too. Well, but uh, look, I, I appreciate the kind words. I I just Kevin, I call it like I see it. You know, you're not perfect. I'm not perfect. I know how to drop to my knees and knees and ask for direction. And I think if more of us would do that, you know, we're still not going to be perfect, but we'll be better off, right? Right. And and everything in this world is not by coincidence. <laughs> no, it's not. Everything in this world is not by coincidence. And my God, you know, what are they going to do next? I mean, they can't ever top it. But I'll tell you this. It's pretty disgusting that they try to make a guy a gang rapist. They send fake bombs places. They do all this stuff. And yet when we do something a little bit wrong, just a little bit, I mean, DEFCON 4 has happened. Oh, yeah. It's 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 a double standard. There's no doubt. I just, if I, well, I can't, I, I can say, what if I were a Democrat? If I were a Democrat um, 
and and saw that what the leadership is doing or allowing to be done, I, I couldn't be a part of the party. I, I just didn't. Well, I, I this couldn't. is what I this is what I propose. I I propose that a law is passed if a political party does these type of antics, they can't be called Democrats. I mean, we're a democratic republic, and that is not a representation of our people. They need to change their name. <laughs> I agree with you, Ken or Kevin. I appreciate it very, very, very much. Mike in South Lake. Mike, I only got a few seconds, but it's all yours. How you doing? Hey, I'm good, Rick. Thanks for taking my call, and I'll make it quick. Just, uh, I just want to point out, or at least something that I'm watching very closely, is the treatment in the media after this event, uh, however real or fake it may be, and uh, the event, what, barely over a year ago, I think it was last July, the shooting of uh, Republican Congress people at the baseball field. Scalise, and, right, yeah. Exactly, and the, and the media's reaction to that. So uh, over the next day and really weeks, too, I'm going to be watching very closely to see uh, how the media treats this and reacts to it. Yeah, unfortunately, I think you and I both know we could probably script out how it's going to be covered. Um, and that's, uh, you know, that's just a, a sad commentary on what passes for news in this country. Um, but you're right, Mike. I, I appreciate it very, very much. Uh, I'm going to try to stay a little bit later and get to, to all these emails. I may not be able to respond uh, in kind, but I will at some point, I promise you. And again, if you want to email, uh, you can do that at Rick Roberts. Show two S's, Rick Roberts, and then show at WBAP.com. If you missed part of the show today, uh, man, all I can tell you, you can go to the podcast, uh, go to WBAP.com, WBAP.com, uh, hit shows. There'll be a drop down. You'll see my name, hit that. And uh, uh, every hour of every show for the last two years has been there. If you go all the way to the bottom, uh, what do you call that? showcase daily showcase what well i don't know what it is uh, what do you call that audio on demand I bet, of course i knew it was something cool like that audio on demand that's down there for you today too and man it'll blow you away that's going to do it for me god's blessings on each and every one of you whether we agree or not god's blessings on these idiots that are trying to find their way too. Just don't let them mess up the state of Texas or the country in the process. Um, I'll see you tomorrow at 2, your afternoon drive. I'm Rick Roberts, News Talk 820 WBAP. Don't quit till the job gets done. That's the only way I know. Don't stop till everything's gone. Straight ahead.